Okay, a couple questions on the first project in MGD 102. Um, the main project being how do I add background to my project? And then there was another one that uh, asked how do I use the certain background images that were provided? So I'm going to help you walk through that. <clears throat> we may be rush through part of that through in class so I appreciate the question I'm gonna do my best here to uh, give you an answer so I'm gonna here I am I'm in MGD 102 so you probably already know how to download the different uh, the different things that you need for the project so I come here to content and in week two, we have the different Samurais. I'll just go ahead and download Samurai 2. Uh, looks like that's the big head. And there's a button to download that. Go ahead and hit download. And that'll put it in my downloads folder on a PC. Your experience will be a little bit different. Let's go back to week two while that's still downloading. And then we have the Shogun patterns. This is actually an EPS file. This should open up in Photoshop just fine, but I'm going to show you a couple ways you can use this file. And that file is downloading still. Almost there. And then in my program it opens up preview. I don't really need that open, so I'm going to close preview. What I want to do is work in Photoshop. So here's Photoshop 2015. You should be familiar with that. Let's go ahead and find those files. <clears throat> For me, it was in my downloads folder, and if I select both of them, I can actually open them both at the same time. Now in this case it's going to ask me to rasterize my EPS format. I didn't cover this in class so go ahead and just whatever it's going to, if it's 11 inches by 300 that's going to be plenty of uh, file space. You can change this to RGB in case you want to match it to uh, your other file. That won't be, as you drag it over it'll convert it anyway so you're, you're going to be fine. <clears throat> in either case. Now you've got a bunch of patterns here uh, and in this case we used it, uh, I'll show you how we can use this um, It's these are probably, well I'll show you how we use this straight out of Photoshop. So I got two files I'm gonna go ahead and create my blank file to work in and I'm just gonna do this practice and we talked about making this, let's go 8 inches by 10 inches and we'll go 150 resolution. That's good enough for printing on a desktop printer. Hit OK. So I now have three files open in Photoshop but I can't see them all at the same time so to be able to see them I want to change it to window, arrange, and then tile all vertically. This is going to put them all side by side. Now I'm on a laptop here, so my screen's kind of small, but I can still work with it. I'll come over here to my Samurai 2, and the way that I know that I have that file open is you'll see that it, come, it highlights a bit. The tab and the lettering is lighter, whereas the ones that aren't clicked on, uh, they're darker. So that lets me know this is the one I'm working in and in this case I have a locked background so I'm not able to move it yet so I have to unlock it well let's see maybe it'll did it let me no so if I have a locked background let's double click it and we just hit OK and that gets rid of the lock and we can now drag it over to my blank document and drop it in there. Now you'll see that it's way too big, which is good. I got high resolution image here. So once I have it moved over to my my photo my editing file, I can close the Samurai JPEG. 
or I don't need to save it. And if I zoom out, I can see more of the image. And Command T is going to give me a transform tool. If I don't remember Command T, I can come up here to Edit, and there's Transform, and I can choose Scale. When I choose Scale, I want to hold the Shift button to keep it in proportion. And if I hold it, the option also, it keeps it in the middle. So I can resize this until I get the samurai image inside my document. Just like that. Now in this case, we have to do some selecting, just like we did in class, uh, because I've got this white that's around the samurai. So if I click use my magic wand tool, I can shift and select more stuff and if I have it set at zero it should get it pretty crisp and then I can delete that and it gets rid of that background most of it. I can zoom in on my image spacebar lets you move things around just to make sure it selected it pretty well And that looks good. Uh, as far as I can tell, I got pretty much the whole background. So on this particular samurai, it was that easy to take the background out of that image and have just transparent all around it. Okay, let's go ahead and save this. I'll just save it to my desktop for now. We'll just call it practice.psd. Now I want one of these backgrounds. Now the, the resolution in this is going to be more than I need as well. And even though I'm dragging the whole thing, I really only need part of it. So I drag it over. In this case, I put it in front of the samurai. You see the layers in front of the samurai. So I can click, drag that layer, and put it behind. Now in this case, uh, I don't have enough background. And maybe that wasn't enough resolution. Uh, let's see, that's probably not the result I want. So let's do that again. Let's open this Shogun Patterns EPS file. And let's not save that background layer. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one. I'm going to open up the the downloads and this time since the resolution wasn't high enough I want that a little bit higher and I could set this to 600 let's try that might take a little while to rasterize that And if you didn't like that file, these Shogun patterns, uh, there were some other ones. There were th there was this one called Web Styles, so we could download that one as well. This one's a PSD file, so we'll download that one. That's another option. I gave you a couple of backgrounds. This one. Since I set it at 600, it's a pretty big file, so it's taking a while to rasterize that. All right, now I've got the three different files open again. This I just opened up web styles. Um, so you can see if I want to use one of these, I uh, come back here to arrange tile vertically, and I could drag this over here to the Shogun. Uh, in this case it looks a little better and I can move it around in the background. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Well, let's see. Maybe I don't want to close it. I can bring this one out so I can see it bigger. That one's a little better. So that background worked a little bit better. You can see I got a little bit of the gray edge here, um, but that's alright. 
I could have worked with that and then that would have been on its own layer. You also had the option to bring in one of these. Uh, I have to bring in, let me tile these vertically again. Okay, I don't need this one anymore. So now I've got these and I can bring these over to the background. And these are going to be kind of small, so I probably don't want to bring them all over like that. So in this case, I'm going to just select one of the layers. Here's 35. I'm just going to bring that one over. And it's behind the samurai. And then we're just going to enlarge it. Now this background, uh, because it's just a background, I can stretch it and it's you really can't tell that it's necessarily bad, but what this does is you can see that it actually tiles in the background. That's what this particular background does. So it doesn't even matter how big you make the image, it keeps the size. So that would have been one of the options. Maybe if I wanted 33 instead, I bring that over here, bring that down to a corner, and I use the transform tool and it'll automatically scale the background. And you could have had a background just like that. Another option, back to the EPSs, this is a little advanced, so if this gets you confused, don't worry, we're going to learn more about Illustrator later, but I could have opened the Shogun patterns in Adobe Illustrator. I'll show you what that looks like here. I'm almost running out of battery. I better plug my computer in. There we go. While that's still opening, I can make sure that I'm saving my Photoshop file as I'm working. I can close web styles out. And then once I had that, then I could do all my coloring or whatever else you wanted to do with that particular image. Let's go back to Illustrator. Still not open. I think it's getting close to getting a new computer time, but uh, I'm trying to hang on to this one as long as I possibly can. It's treated me quite well for many years. Uh, go ahead and hit yes on that little option. All right, so now we're in vector program, and that's what these all are: is that they're vector formats. And uh, right now, if I select them, it selects all of them, so I can ungroup them. And I'm hoping I just get a pattern here. And I can, is this one working layers? Yeah, I can turn off this front layer. So if I selected all of that, I could then come into Photoshop. I just hit copy, come up here to edit, copy. Again, this is advanced, a little advanced. So if you don't want to do this, don't, you don't have to. And then I would paste it, but I'd paste it as pixels and I hit OK, and because it's vector, I can actually make this any size I want, and it's going to stay crisp. So even if I wanted to make it wider than it normally was, I can copy and paste that vector part into the background. Oh, that looks kind of cool. It's just a, a generic, arbitrary background. save. When you are ready to finish after you've done all your coloring and everything else, uh, to save your JPEG you just go to save as. Instead of Photoshop we're going to choose JPEG option. And I'll keep the same file name and I'll hit save.
keep it at maximum quality, and then come back to D2L, Dropbox, and then upload the JPEG. All right, I hope that helps everybody out. If you have any more questions, uh, let me know. I'll keep checking my email as frequently as I can and answer the best I can. All right, take care.